So you are a Muslim and you're new to Islam. I want to begin by welcoming you with the greeting of the Muslims. And that greeting is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Literally translated as greetings of peace, mercy, and blessings of the Almighty upon you, or peace be upon you. Coming up, stick around till the end for new reverts go to guide to Islam for the start of your new Muslim life. Now, you'll be surprised to know that this Islamic greeting is also the greeting of all the prophets and the messengers. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon them all. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or Isa alayhi salam, greeted his disciples and his people in John 20:21, 20, saying, Shalom alaykum. In Arabic, is the same, Assalamu alaykum. So here it is in Arabic, Salamu alaykum, and here it is in Aramaic, Shalom alaykum. These are the Semitic languages, and it roughly means peace be upon you. Therefore, we Muslims greet every single person with the greeting of Jesus, السلام, the greeting of all the prophets and messengers. And peace is one of the words that is derived from Islam after submitting, submitting yourself peacefully to God the Almighty. When we say Assalamu Alaikum or Shalom Alaikum, we basically say, I declare peace from the Almighty to you. I declare to be in a peaceful relationship with you and cause no harm, etc. etc. According to some Muslim scholars, Assalamu Alaikum means Salamullahi Alaika wa Hifdihi. Assalamu alaykum means Salamullahi alayka wa hifdihi, meaning may the peace of the Almighty be upon you and his protection. The final Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him, said, Ya ayyuhan nasu, afshu salama wa at'imu ta'ama wa silu rihama wa sallu billayli wa nasu niyam. The translation of the meaning is, O oh people, extend greetings, saying salam to each other. Keep relations with your kin, provide food to the people, and pray at night when people are asleep, and you will enter paradise in peace. Now, the Arabs during the Jahiliya, which basically means the pre-Islamic ignorance, or the Arabian's refusal to worship God the Almighty instead of the idols, they used to greet each other by saying, Hayyak Allah, Zad Allah fi umrika. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the number of years of your life because that's all they cared about. Long life. To the Arabs, pre Islam, long life meant more wives, more kids, and more influence. When Islam came, the greeting between the Muslims remained the same as the prophets and the messengers used to greet their own people, tribes, and nations. Assalamu alaikum is the best and the most beautiful way to greet a person. Welcome to Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty, shower you with his peace and blessings. You are now part of the beautiful religion of Islam and a part of a worldwide brotherhood and sisterhood. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to God the Almighty. I want to extend a virtual hand and let you know that you are not alone. We got your back, my brothers and sisters. Before we begin with this beginner's guide to Islam, please understand that it is normal to feel a medley of different emotions, from happy to nervous to anxious and even overwhelmed. This is a major transition for you, one that will touch every aspect of your life. Matter of fact, your first year as a Muslim is the most challenging year of your life. According to research and data we have, the devil will whisper all sorts of confusion and doubts in your mind. Did I make the right decision? What about my family and friends? Is Islam the true religion? What about the religion of Jesus Christ السلام, and all the prophets and messengers? Am I be betraying my family, my ancestors, and my faith, etc., etc.? 
remember that Islam is such a beautiful religion. And I'm going to confirm what you have learned so far about Islam to help you stay strong in your faith. And also, it's an opportunity for others to learn about Islam as well. This is the one and only true religion God the Almighty chose for humanity. And for that reason, He sent all the prophets and messengers to convey this message to us. God the Almighty sent only one true religion from the time of Adam, السلام, peace be upon him, to the time, to the end of time. It was perfected and completed when the final prophet Muhammad was sent. And it was given a name, Islam. Every single messenger and prophet that was sent to this earth preached and taught the message of Islam. Islam is not a new religion. Islam and its teachings has always been the one and only true religion accepted by God the Almighty. And all the prophets and messengers were Muslims. Islam is the religion of Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, who is titled Israel, by the way, Joseph, Jethro, Job, Ezekiel, Moses, Aaron, David, Solomon, Elias, or Elijah, Jonah, Zechariah, John, Jesus, and Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of God be upon them all. And the only true religion in the eyes of the Almighty. And now you're wondering, I know all those prophets and messengers. I learned them at some point in my life. Well, yeah, God the Almighty would not confuse us and send all these prophets and messengers to preach different ways of life or beliefs. Can you imagine if Abraham, for example, preached something else completely different than what Jesus and Moses conveyed? Do you think Solomon, Jacob, and Isaac taught people to worship the idols, whether it's in the form of a man, animal, or nature? No, no. These prophets and messengers were chosen and sent as warners to their own tribes and nations. They were sent to guide people to the straight path, the path of God Almighty. Now, what does Islam mean? And as I welcome you as a revert to Islam, I am here trying to strengthen your faith since we live in strange times, where the person wake up, wakes up in the morning as a believer and by the evening he is not a believer. Islam is to worship God the Almighty alone. Your Lord and my Lord is one, as Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, alayhi salam said. Islam means not to associate a partner, wife, or son to him. Islam means nothing equals to God the Almighty, because nothing equals to the one and only Creator. God the Almighty would not send all these religions and be like, all right, pick and choose, or you guys figure it out. No. God the Almighty sent all these prophets and messengers to teach us how to spend and live this temporary life. The way God the Almighty wants us to live, not the way we want to spend it. They taught us the most important thing, that is the commandments, that says, your Lord and my Lord is one, so worship Him. He's not a man, He's not two, He's not three, and He's not human. The following is strong verses that explicitly state that no one has ever seen God the Almighty. And this is just to clear the confusion again and affirm what you have studied so far. In John 5.37, it says, And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice nor seen his form. So, in the Semitic languages, Father is not taken literally, but, but metaphorically. When scripture is translated to English, Father means a biological being. And that's the issue with the English language, since it's a new language that is limited. When Jesus says this explicit statement, his disciples understood it. It was no confusion in it. Because Jesus Christ's disciples didn't first and foremost view him as God or Son of God. They considered him as a teacher, a prophet, and a messenger sent by God the Almighty. It wasn't until 325 
CE, after Jesus Christ was raised to the heavens, that the divinity of Jesus Christ appeared. Another verse in John 1.18, it says, No man hath seen God at any time. Another one, Exodus 33.20, it says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. It is crystal clear that no man has seen God at any time, and that no man can see his face. And if any do, they shall then die. So, the fact remains, God cannot be seen. Jesus was seen with no trouble at all. Therefore, Jesus is not God. Simple logic and does not require the mental gymnastics to prove the divinity. Also, the commandments never ever said anything about Trinity or the divinity of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. The word Trinity appears nowhere in the Bible. The concept of Trinity was finalized at the First Council of Nicaea in 325 CE after years and years of debate. Tertullian, and remember his name, Tertullian is called the father of Latin Christianity and the founder of Western theology. Tertullian originated new theological concepts and advanced the developments of early church doctrine. He is most famous for being the first writer in Latin known to use the term Trinity. In Latin, Trinitas. Yes, we get it. If you're brought up in a certain environment or faith, of course you'll be taught the faith of that society or mainly your parents. And as you grow older enough, you get to find out that there are other faiths that exist besides yours. So in this case, how do we know which religion or faith is true? Because every religion says they are the true religion, right? The question itself is not correct. Christianity is not a religion. Judaism is not a religion. Christianity was named after Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. Judaism was named after Judah. Islam is the only true religion that's been saying it is the true religion since the creation began. And not only this, God the Almighty also revealed to us that Islam is not a new religion. It was perfected and completed with Muhammad. God the Almighty says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-Rajim, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. The translation of the meaning, it says today, I have perfected your faith for you, completed my favor upon you, and chosen Islam as your way. This is God the Almighty's direct words. Today I have perfected your faith for you, completed my favor upon you, and chosen Islam as your way. The only religion accepted by God the Almighty. This does not mean that Islam did not exist. It just happens that it was completed in its original form with Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him. Now, what does it mean to be a Muslim and how to be a Muslim? I know this word Muslim or Islam makes people shiver from anxiety and fear, when in fact, every single person born since Adam to the day of judgment is born as a Muslim. Later on, society, the environment, and the parents change that innate nature that was born in us, knowing the true religion to the religion of our parents or the religion of our culture. A Muslim is a person who completely submits to the will of the Almighty. You believe in one God, the Almighty, and you surrender to Him. You accept every single calamity that befalls you and praise every single blessings that is bestowed on you. That's why we say the prophets and the messengers were all Muslims. They taught us that the only true God, the Almighty, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has no partner, wife, or son. 
the moment you declare this in your heart, you are already a Muslim. The bottom line is, there were thanks given to some prophets and messengers that were not given to others. Some prophets were given the revelations and some, not, some were not. God the Almighty knows the wisdom behind this. And he chose Muhammad to be the final prophet and messenger as a mercy to mankind. And it is mentioned in the previous scriptures as the, the Bible and the Torah. So hopefully what I just mentioned helps strengthen your faith in your new journey as a Muslim. However, the process of learning this religion and all the rules and the guidelines can be very overwhelming at first especially for revert who has other responsibilities in life to balance like school work family etc so we are here to help and when i say we i speak on, i speak on behalf of the entire muslim community with the assistance of a wonderful group of revert brothers and sisters i compiled a list of things you will need to get through your first year as a muslim in this video and the next ones to come I will cover everything inshallah from faith, identity, prayer and give you a list of resources and books and a list of terms that may be helpful to you. I want to end with a fascinating story that happened to me just a couple of weeks ago and this series of videos are dedicated to that event. I met a young lady recently who was going through some traveling times. Her only place to reflect and ask God the Almighty for help was the chapel at work. She wasn't religious and never really practiced anything, although she was brought up as a Christian. One time she went to the chapel during her lunch break at work and saw a Muslim praying for the first time. Yes, Muslims use chapels to pray. Matter of fact, Muslims use any place of worship to pray as long as the place is clean. So she sat down and watched the Muslim dude praying, bowing down, prostrating to God the Almighty. She asked after the prayer was finished, excuse me, do you mind if I ask what were you doing? She's never met a Muslim, let alone a Muslim praying. Then a conversation took place about prayer and Islam. The next day she went to the chapel and seen the same Muslim dude praying. After prayer was completed, she said, I try to pray like you at home alone and I want you to know that I have never ever felt such peace, tranquility and happiness in my heart. She continued, I was brought up as a Christian by name. We never practiced. We lived a free life. Do as you wish. No rules, no purpose and nothing to worry about. She said, I met Muslims before and I work with them, but I always thought Muslims were the most boring people on this planet. I thought Muslims didn't laugh, didn't love and didn't care except for themselves. And here I am. I was the most selfish person on this planet, partied with the dudes and drank all sorts of drinks, never thought about others except me, I and myself. She continued, it's not just me. The majority of people, including my family, have these misconceptions that Muslims could not have fun. Muslims didn't enjoy life and they think Muslims are unhappy and live boring lives. And now that I am interested in Islam and got to know Muslims, I am sorry to say that I thought Muslims were no, weren't normal. I am sorry I thought Muslims were from another planet. I am sorry I was ignorant about Islam and Muslims. I'm sorry, I was oblivious of the purpose of this life, which you Muslims are the only people on this planet that have that purpose without neglecting yourself and have a good life. I now can enjoy my new journey and still enjoy life, except this time I have a purpose. Two days later, this young lady reverted to Islam and learning the basics of this beautiful religion, alhamdulillah. And videos like this are meant to help reverts on their new journey. However, for those who are non-Muslims and watching this video, I have three questions for you. Have you ever met a Muslim 
Where do the stereotypes about Muslims come from? Do you know anything about Islam? I encourage you to meet a Muslim. If you're out and about and you see a Muslim, ask them and engage in the conversation. Know a Muslim before you judge a Muslim because Islam is the only monotheistic religion. There is no discussion or thought process with any other option. It's impossible for someone else to be burdened with your with sins I created. Think about it. How unfair is that? Logically, it does not make sense. And even if we try to make any sense of it, and let's assume Jesus died for all of our sins, then the question that arises is, why be good at all, right? Because he's already died for our sins. So there is no reason to be good people at all. There is no reason to be sober, no reason not to commit adultery, no reason not to commit murder, on and on and on. Nothing makes sense about the concept of Jesus dying for our sins and the Trinity. Three never makes one. Remember that. It's impossible. Three never makes one. Impossible. It's like when the police stops you for speed limit. If the police did not exist or dies for our sins, then there would be no rules and therefore no speeding limit. There must be a speed limit. There must be rules, otherwise life wouldn't be fair. That's why Islam is so clear, no confusion about it. This is right, this is wrong. These are the rewards and these are the punishments. This is what all the prophets and messengers conveyed to us. Till next video, inshaAllah. Fi amani Allahi wa ra'ayatih. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Greetings of peace, mercy, and blessings, everyone.